All right, class. So this is sort of the big picture problem for our IR and NMR spectroscopy sections. And this problem is asking us to sort of come up with a, a plausible uh, structure for a given you know, molecule. The information that's given to us is the formula. So we've got C11H14O2. Um, and we've got an IR spectrum with some, some peaks that are labeled and an NMR spectrum um, with all of the NMR, relevant NMR data for us. So I'm going to talk through sort of the strategy behind you know, a problem like this, how I'd like you guys to sort of write everything out, and then how we can sort of come to a, a plausible um, structure for you know, a final product and then check to make sure that everything sort of makes sense. Um, that we're, we're you know, proposing something that is consistent with the data. That's, that's the goal here. Um, okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that I would do is look at my IR spectrum and sort of label what, you know, what I see. Here we've got some peaks just below 3,000. So right away, I'm going to say SP3CH. So we've got some um, you know, alkane type SP3CH bonds that are stretching there. This 3033, that's gonna be an SP2 CH, so just above 3000. That's my SP2 hybridized CH bonds. At 1759, so I think that this is pretty clearly a C double bond O. And then we can sort of think about, well, what type of, of C double bond O, what type of carbonyl stretch is that? So if we go to our, our table here, here is our you know C double bond O, We've got ketones, acids, about 1710. So again, we're at 1760 pretty much. Um, we also know that conjugation is going to lower the frequency, so probably not a ketone or acid. Aldehyde, 1725. Again, we're, we're sort of, you know, this is a little bit higher than, than, uh, than those numbers. Esters, that's the highest one we have here, so about 1735. So I might be thinking ester here, um, you know, looking at what else, you know, fits. That's really the only thing I'm sort of finding on here. So that's going to be my, my guess at this point in time. So for this C10, I'm going to guess, you know, something like this um, with some other stuff going on here. So I've got a generic ester here. I'm going to put an R group here and I'm going to say not a ring. And I'm going to say that that's not a ring on this other side of this, you know, carbonyl stretch, um, because this is so high, it doesn't, if it was uh, conjugated, then that stretch would, would be lowered. It would be, you know, I'd expect it to be below 1735. But since it's above, um, I'm going to say definitely we don't have conjugation going on here. So I'm going to put not a ring um, for my ester. But I think that's a, a good, you know, a good start. 1600, that is going to be a benzene ring, right? So whenever we see 1600, we're going to think that that's a phenyl ring. So maybe that phenyl ring's over here, right? So we could say, well, you know, maybe we've got some ring over here because there's clearly a ring in my structure. Um, but I, I know that it's not on this side because this 1760 um, would be much lower, conjugation would lower that frequency uh, to below 1735 for sure. So that's the conclusions that I can draw from my IR. And these labels, I think, are, are very important, right? We need to have this sort of information. The sp2ch, that can come from my ring, so that, that makes sense. This other R group, that this sort of suggests that that's going to be some sort of alkane, um, you know, uh, ethyl group, a propyl group, something like that, probably coming off as this R group because I have these sp3ch's. So then let's go to the NMR and see what we can find in the NMR. This is how I'm going to present the NMR to you, and it's sort of hard to see, um, you know, it's sort of hard to interpret this. So what I would really recommend is labeling all these peaks. So out here, you know, I've got a two high doublet. This one is, again, a two high doublet. So writing the information on, you know, the actual NMR spectrum makes it easier to, to interpret. So here at 2.5, this is a two high triplet. This peak here at 2.3 is a three high singlet. So that singlet, that's, you know, right away I'm sort of saying, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, there's a methyl group there, three high, it's probably a methyl group, and it's isolated. Three high singlet means, you know, a methyl group that's isolated from other things that's not part of an, an alkane chain. 
Down here at 1.8, I've got a two high multiplet. Um, so M means multiplet, so multiple things going on, um, more complex splitting. And then at 1.8, or excuse me, at 1.0, I've got a three high triplet. So a three high triplet, to me, a three high triplet indicates I've got something like this. So this methyl group here, that would show up as a three high triplet because it's bonded to this methylene linker. So that would you know, split this methyl group into a three high triplet. This is coming right at about one. So that makes sense for a methyl group. Um, you know, if we, if we turn this table over and we look at where a methyl group is gonna come on an alkane, 0 0.9. So right away, this to me says, I've got some sort of ethyl group. For this CH2, I think I, I've got sort of, you know, if this was, if this say was linked to my carbonyl carbon, then I would expect to see some sort of two high quadruplet, right? Two high quadruplet, I don't see that, but this CH2 is probably linked to something else, and then it's this multiplet here, right? Because I've gotta have, you know, a two high something. It's not gonna be this two high triplet, because this would be a quadruplet at least. So this um, methylene is probably this peak here, um, and then that's probably linked to something else. So there's gonna be some other you know, CH2 or something else here um, that I'll have to deal with. So, so far, that's, that's pretty good. Um, the next thing I might say is, well, let's, let's deal with these two peaks out here. These, I, th I think, are very indicative of something. So, to me, I'm gonna say that these peaks out here, those are probably gonna be something on a ring. So if I look at where my phenyl, my aromatic you know, phenyl H uh, shifts come, approximately 7.2, we're right here at seven, 6.9, 7.1. So pretty clearly, I think we've got a situation like this. I've drawn here where I've got a symmetric phenyl ring, right? So it's symmetric, I have mirror plane right along here. So two of these, right, a two high doublet and a two high doublet, that's what I would expect um, for something like this. Now, this sort of, you know, reminds me of this three high singlet, and that three high singlet could be a benzylic, a phenyl methyl, so a phenyl with a, a methyl group on it, and that comes at approximately 2.3. So my three high singlet, well, that's exactly at 2.3. So I'm gonna put a methyl group here. I really think that matches up really nicely where I would have an R group coming off here. Three high singlet would be my methyl group on that benzene ring. Um, that matches up really nicely. These are, I think, are clearly two high doublets, uh, you know, on that ring, because I've got that mirror plane here. So, you know, this, I think something like this is definitely part of my structure. Um, so let's sort of bring it together a little bit here. Uh, we know that we have an ester. We know that we've probably got a ring over here. Now we're gonna add that methyl group right over here. Um, that takes care of this peak, this peak, and this peak. I think we earlier said we've got a three high triplet from this methyl group. This multiplet is probably this methylene. So that leaves this peak over here, a two high triplet. So right away I'm gonna say, well, that could be a CH2, CH2, CH3, a propyl group because this methylene would be split by this methylene to give a two high triplet. This would be a multiplet, because I've got you know splitting from both of these groups. And then this would be a triplet as well, so three high triplet. So something like this, a propyl group, would, would also make sense. So I think I'm getting pretty close here. I'm gonna go ahead and draw out what I think. So I think this structure here, where I've got a propyl group bonded to my um, carbonyl carbon, so I do not have conjugation here, then I've got this ester, and then I've got my ring off of the other end of the ester. I think this is consistent with all of the information that I have here. So then the next exercise would then be to, to go back through, so label all of these, H, 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 and then just double check to make sure that everything is consistent with all of the data that was presented you know, do the assignments. So assign where you think each proton sort of belongs in all of the, the proton NMR spectra. Um, but I think this is probably a, a very plausible, good structure to come up with. The, the other thing 
Now that I forgot, we were given the, uh, the chemical formula, so don't forget about that, C11H14O2. So let's go ahead and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So C11, H14. So here's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then two oxygens. I think we're in good shape. This looks pretty good.